You're listening to another life-transforming message from Awaken Church with campuses in San Diego and Salt Lake City. To find out more about us, go to awakenchurch.com. Our scripture tonight is Job 3.10b. That's the last part of Joel. Excuse me, not Job. We're not fooling with Job tonight. But Joel 3.10 and the B part of the scripture. It says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Why? Because we are speaking spirits made in the image of God. So just your presence, your thoughts does not change things in the realm of the spirit. God spoke. So according to Ephesians 5.1, we are told to be imitators of God as dear children. Amen. So we are to imitate our fathers. So we want to see change, then we have to use our mouths. So why is weak not good? People take advantage of weak people. Amen. Nobody respects weak people. Or folks don't go to weak people for advice. And weak people do not have the victory. That's why the Bible said, let the weak say, I am strong. Amen. So my message entitled tonight is Dominion. Dominion. Buckle up your seatbelts. We're going somewhere tonight. <laughs> Romans 5, 17 in the NIV says, For if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man. How much more will those who receive God's abundant provision, abundant provision, I'll say it again, abundant provision of grace, and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the anointed one. So we are called to be kings and priests over our own lives. Your future is in your mouth. Got it. Control it well. Your life depends on it. So many times people say what they see, what they've been taught, what they heard, what they think, what they believe, how they feel, but that will never bring you victory. You got to learn to control your mouth. You got to learn to control what you say. The thing that you want to see when the devil has got you in a corner is the thing you must not say. You feel like saying, well, I, I, that's how it is. No, that's not how it is. You got power to speak life and death. You can change your circumstances in the name of Jesus. We are spirit beings made in the image of God. So we want to talk like God, walk like God, so we can live like God's in the earth realm. Because this is what God called us to be. Amen? You might say, well, can we be God's in the earth realm? Can I break it down for you tonight? My children have the ability to imitate me. They can't never be me, but they can imitate me because they're my children. I can never be God, but I can imitate God because I'm his child. I'm a child of the beloved. God told us to walk like him, talk like him, and he gave us dominion. In the first chapter, in the first book of the Bible, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion. You are supposed to dominate your life, dominate the world you live in, in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't sit around, let people push you around, beat you down, tell you you're too short, too tall, too fat. All that garbage is utterly nonsense. I don't care where you live, you can be on top. I don't care where you go, you can have victory. The victory is in your mouth. Hallelujah. If you can't shout amen, holla ouch. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have got to learn how to be a priest over our life. We're the, we're the priests. Our future's in our, in our hands. By the one man brought sin, Adam, into the whole world. By the one man, Jesus Christ, he brought victory. We are to reign in this life as kings and priests. How many Christians are so beat down, broken down, defeated, sick, headaches, dying before their time because they don't have the power, they don't have the dominion, never been taught how to walk in it, how to rule over their situations or circumstances, how to change it in the name of Jesus Christ. You can change it. You can change it. I remember when I bought this freezer a few years ago before I moved to California. And I had the freezer for two years, and the freezer died on me. So I'm thinking, whoa. And so my husband said, well, what are you going to do, dear Quacha? All that money you pay for that freezer is out the window because it's dead, and you refuse to take any insurance out, so now you're out of your money. I said, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> Not the God I serve. Hello? Not the God I serve. So I called up the president of the company. 
Home Depot. Yeah, I did. I said, listen, I bought this freezer. I said, and I had it for two years and it went dead. Now, my sister-in-law's freezer is 25 years old. It's still running strong. What's up? So, so he said, well, ma'am, uh, did you have uh, insurance on this? I said, look, I'm, not, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have no insurance. But shouldn't this freezer last more than two years? He says, so what do you want to do? I can give you another freezer, but we don't have that model in stock. And that sale is over now. And uh, we can give you back your money. I said, you can give me back my money. He said, okay, come to the Home Depot. Which one did you buy that? And he gave me back my money. Then a guy in our church said, your freezer's dead. That's too bad. Let me come look at it. He came and looked at our freezer and, and fixed it for $40. He found a $40 part missing and fixed it for 40 bucks. That's the God I serve. That's the God I serve. I don't give my money to the devil. Hello? You got the power to change situations and circumstances. I remember when I was going to Africa one trip, and the airline said, well, you took too long to pay for your tickets, uh, Reverend Davis. Uh, we don't have no uh, eight seats on the, on, on, on the flight. We only got five seats left. I said, wow, somebody's got to get off that plane. <laughs> I need eight seats. Somebody's not flying to Africa, but I am. <laughs> so he said, well, what do you want to do? I said, I need eight seats. Aren't you the president? He said, yes, ma'am. I said, well, you need to fix it. <laughs> well, let me get a hold of my top person, my, my top, uh, uh, you know, person, and uh, we'll get back to you in 24 hours. I said, okay. I told everybody, I hope you're all packing because we got to get out of here. He said, I thought you said, I said, that's what they said. That's not what I said. So they started packing their bags, and the president of the company had this assistant call me back and said, we got your t seats, uh, uh, Reverend Davis. So just go to your nearest, any, pick any travel agent you want. Just go there and pay your bill. He says, and uh, you all set. That bill was 100 and, was, was it, was, no, it was $26,169.69. I ran down there and paid that so fast it'd make your head spin. And we were on that plane riding. I say, hey, devil, what you think about this? We going to Africa. You got to mount up, folks. This kingdom is not for wimps. It's not for weak people. It's not for dumb, double-minded people. It's not for wishy-washy people. It's not for weak people. It's not for how you think people. Not for how you feel. But it's for people that know their God shall do great and mighty exploits. Amen? So how do you reign in life? Proverbs 18.21 says, put this, put this in your spirit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. I love that my tongue can bring me anything I want. My tongue. I don't know about your tongue. Mine, I'm trained in mine. Now, let me tell me that, the, well, you can't. Uh, well, that's impossible. My God said, all things are possible. Only believe. All things is all things. So I don't have no problems. I got opportunities. Amen? I don't say you got any problems. I know I have an opportunity. I never say you got a, pro you got a problem. No, I don't have problems. I got opportunities. It's how you speak and how you think and how you talk and how you live that can give you the power over the average, average Joe Blow in life. In every situation, in every circumstances, you should have the dominion. God gave it to you. Everything that can walk, crawl, swim, and flies. In Genesis chapter 1, he gave us dominion. But you got to rise up and take it. Hello? Nobody's going to give you nothing. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. So what's your choice? I'm not letting the devil take nothing that belongs to me. If it belongs to me, I'm taking it back from him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I think about all the money and all the opportunities that my mother never got. Procrastinating. Put this off. Lost that, uh, that opportunity. Lost this blessing. Always talking negative. Always talking the wrong thing. And it always showed up. So I thought, oh, I don't, I don't want to repeat that lifestyle. Always talking broke, bad luck, this and that. No, I curse bad luck and say, you don't, you're not related to me. I'm not related to you. Don't come no even to my neighborhood. Do you talk like that? Absolutely. 
I had a girlfriend once that invited me. She said, to a quacha, I'm, I live in Africa. She said, you coming? Are you coming? I said, well, if you invite me, I'm coming. I don't care if you live anywhere other than the moon. I will show up. <laughs> and I always do. He said, so many Americans said they're coming to Kenya. And you're here. I said, I told you I was coming. They looked at me. Yeah, but I didn't believe you. That's your problem. I'm here. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So what are you going to do? Let the devil run shotgun over your life and put limits on you and tell you you can't do this. Nobody in your family ever had any money. Nobody in your family ever owned a house. Nobody in your family ever bought a nice car. Nobody in your family. Less. I said, I'm in a new family. I'm in the family of God. I can buy whatever I want. Hello? Take the limits off of God. Take the limits off of God. When they take up a tide off, and you should be running down here like a crazy person to put your money in. Knowing the dividends that God pays. Woo. I've tried it. It works. You don't try it. You just do it. But I've tested it. It works. I've done it. So tonight God is saying, don't have a weak, shabby, broken down life. Don't have a defeated life because everybody in your family. Why don't you be the trailblazer? Huh? Why don't you be the trailblazer? Why don't you do things that nobody in your family has ever done before? Write history in your bloodline. Change the circumstances. Say, our family is never broke. Our family can go anywhere we want to go. Just invite us. We'll show up. Is that your testimony? If it's not, change it tonight. Give it to that weak, loose mouth that's done nothing for you but brought you defeat. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. I've been down that road. It sucks. My mother said, we can't do that. We don't have any money. Where do you think, where you think, we, where you think we live? Huh? Nobody in this neighborhood does that. What, what you going to do what? I wish you stopped telling people what you're going to do. We don't have no money for that. That's how, uh, all I heard all my life growing up. That's not in my budget. You can't do that. What's the matter with you? I can't get that through your thick head to stop saying stuff you can't have. Thank God she never got it in my head, but so good. Because the Holy Ghost said, girl, if you ride with me, I'll take you to the ends of the earth. If you ride with me, I'll give you things you only dreamt of. If you ride with me, I'll make you a new person. Ride with me. And I said, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Are you tired of your life tonight? Change it. Change it. Glory to God. How do you change it? Acts 1.8. God gave us power. He said, but you shall receive power. Power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Judea, and the utmost parts of the earth. You shall be witnesses when the power comes. When the power comes, tap into it. Roll with the power. Don't say, is this real? I don't know. If this, does it work? Get in the ship and let's go. <laughs> it works. You got this. You got this. It's for God's children. If you are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, you got this. He's a good God. He's your God. He's your teacher. He's your protector. He's your source. He will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't care where you go. God is the victory. I can stand here and tell you all night, story after story, what God has done. I remember my youngest daughter was on a business trip and she was bone tied at the end of a rope. And the stewardess said, we got 200 and something people on the waiting list. Nobody's getting on this flight. So she called up Pam and said, I don't think I'm going to lose it. They said, there's no room for me on the flight. They say, I can't get on this. Two and something people, they overbooked. Nobody's getting on this flight. So my daughter Pam is like a mother. She said, what? You getting on that flight? <laughs> she said, huh? She said, I'm going to pray. Call me back in two minutes. You're getting on that flight. In the name of Jesus, you're getting on that flight. So she said, Lord, Susan's on that flight. Susan called back and said, guess what? The stewardess came out in the middle of the lot, the middle of the, of, of the gate, and pointed to me and said, you, get your stuff and get on the plane. This is how you can live, folks. Amen? Amen? You don't like your life, change it. I challenge you tonight to change it. The Spirit of God said if you will reach out tonight, he's going to do signs and wonders and miracles. So whatever you've been dreaming of cannot be a dream but a reality tonight. If you would get rid, kick fear out and let faith in, you can do signs and wonders. You can have a supernatural life. You can have an abundant life because we serve on a supernatural God. So if you want super, I got super tonight. Regular, don't cut it no more for quacha. Let the weak say, I'm strong. 
but God gave you dominion. Say dominion. dominion. Say dominion. dominion. Say it like you mean it. Dominion. Now we're talking. I don't want you to go out of this church tonight and say, boy, that was a nice message. You know, I don't like nice messages. <laughs> I like messages. I like messages going to challenge me and change my life. I like a message that's going to put me on another level. I like a message that's going to change how I live and how I think and how I think. I don't let people dictate what kind of life I'm going to have. Hello? I don't let people sit here and say, well, you're this and you're that and this and that. And I look at them and just laugh. Like I do with the devil, I just laugh. Well, you, you think you're all that? Yeah, and a bag of chips. <laughs> because you know what? If God be for you, who can be against you? God is for you. God is on your side tonight. That dunamis power lives in you. It's already in there. You got to tap into it. You got to learn how to pull it out. You got to learn how to walk on water in the spirit realm and call things that are not as though they were. In the name of, what does it say in Romans 4, 17b? Amen, A student. Hello. That's Romans 4, 17b. The God that calls the dead to life and calls things that are not as though they, they were. You call them like you got them and they stay there. Well, I got a broken foot. Well, you got a broken foot. No, I had a broken foot. My foot's healed. That's how you have to talk. They said I had a negative balance in my account. But now they say I got, it's in the red. Wow, where did all this money come from? That's not my business. I just have to believe God. I don't have to work out the details. I don't have to figure it out. I'm not the Holy Ghost. All I got to do is believe. All I got to do is believe. Believe and receive. Believe and receive. Believe and receive. Believe and receive. Come on, believe and receive. Believe and receive. Believers, you got to wake up, church, and change the way you think. Go to a job and say, well, a lot of people going to call for this job. I don't know if they think they're going to pick me. I, I don't know if they, I got the same qualifications, but I got the experience, but why would they pick me? Why would they pick anybody else but you? I had one of my directors in Malawi, Southeast Africa. Well, when I was down there, he said, you know what, Kwachi? He says, I've got a problem. I said, what's the problem? We don't have problems. We've got opportunities. He said, well, I got an opportunity. So what is it? Tell me. He said, I'm going for a job interview after you fly out of here. He said, and I, I got good qualifications. He said, but 600 other guys are going to show up with the same experience and the same qualifications. He said, so what am I going to do? I said, let me ask you one question. Do you want the job? He said, well, of course I want the job. I, got, I need that job. I said, well, it's all settled. It's your job. Just tell God it's your job. It's it. I said, when I get back to America, you call me, collect, and you better tell me you got that job. <laughs> Calls me up. I got back. Took me two days to get back from Southeast Africa. It always takes two days. And so when I got back, he said, phone rang. Collect call, blah, blah, blah. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, I take the charges. Guess what, Quacha? You got the job. Well, I didn't get to tell you. I said, well, I already know what. I told you you was going to get the job if you wanted. Six hundred other people, not sixty, six hundred. Same experience, same education, but he got the job. What about you tonight? He got the job. Don't tell me about the economy. Don't tell me about COVID. I don't give a can about COVID. I go wherever I want to go and do what I want to do when I get there. Hallelujah. 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 We give God the highest praise. Amen? Amen? So what's your opportunity tonight? What do you need from God tonight? Are you weak or are you strong? Are you an observer or are you a warrior? Who are you tonight? Do you know who you are? Or if you let somebody else label you and tell you, well, you're too short, you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're the wrong color, you're the wrong... I don't buy none of that garbage. I'm a child of God, made in God's image. If God be for me, who can be against me? It's, it's, it's up, 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 Jesus. Everything in the kingdom of God is speed and acceleration. Everything in God is speed and acceleration. Because it's downward spiral with the devil. But with God, it's speed and acceleration. I had one of my uh, students ask me, because you know the Lord laid on my heart to pour into the next generation. I have a mentorship program, so I teach people how to live like I live. And so he said, well, what's this speed and acceleration? He said, where is that in the Bible? I said, oh, like Pastor, like Pastor um, Jurgen says, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> yeah, I said, you want to know what speed, supernatural speed is? Remember when Elijah outran the horse and the chariot? No human being can physically outrun a horse. But he 
outran the horse and the chariot. We call that in the spirit realm, speed and acceleration. Every day I say, God, give me speed and acceleration. I want to advance at a supernatural rate. I want to do things quicker than anybody else in the name of Jesus. So today I rise with a new anointing. Every day I say, Hallelujah. I prophesy to myself. I say, I serve heaven and earth as my witness. Today I break out of this level. Today I break out of this level. Today I break out of this level. Because the level I'm on today is not good enough for tomorrow. The level I was on yesterday wasn't good enough for today because I'm rising with speed and acceleration. So every day I say, I serve heaven and earth as my witness. Today I break out of this level. Break out, church. Break out of that level. Don't ever get comfortable because there's no limits in God. So what do you say? Well, if I can get there, it can't be no further. I know one day my daughter was saying, oh, my God, Ma, you know, I was thinking the sky, the sky was the limit. The sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. Until God told her, I have not placed, he told Pam, I have not placed any limits on your life. Every limit that you have in your life is self-imposed. Are you all listening? Every limit that you have in your life is self-imposed. This little girl from Harlem, fighting roaches and rats there all my life growing up, go anywhere I want to go, what's your problem? What's your excuse? What's your problem? What's your excuse? I'm not ashamed of my past, because my past is my past. I'm looking at my future. People say, well, you don't know where I came from. You don't know where I came from. You are looking for a crutch. Somebody to rock us in our wounds. Oh, poor little you. No, God don't rock nobody. So why would I rock them? Shape up or ship out. Get it together. God is for you. You don't have no excuses. Let the weak say, I am strong. Tonight you can be strong. Stronger than you only ever imagined. You know what I used to do when I was first saved? I used to write, get a billboard and write on that billboard, uh, you know, construction paper, everything I wanted in life. It was like, well, just a dream, but I still wrote it. But it wasn't a dream because I got everything I wrote on that paper. Before God in this holy pulpit, everything I wrote and drew on that picture, I have obtained in life. So what is your, what's, what's your opportunity tonight? What do you want in life? Where do you want to go? The Spirit of God saying there's somebody in here tonight was saying, I wish that was my testimony. It can be yours tonight. It can be yours tonight. If that's you tonight, and you said, I want that for my testimony, that I want you to stand on your feet. If you say, I want unlimited resources, I want speed and acceleration, I want access from the Spirit of God, I want to be able to go where I was only a dream before, but if all things are possible, I want that possibility. I'm going to prophesy, I'm going to pray, and I want you to come one by one when you see me in church and give me your testimony, give me your God story, because it's going to happen in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the God who answers by fire, the God has just called upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Every hand that's stretched up towards heaven as an act of faith. I prophesy by the power of God under the anointing of the living God that Lord give them their heart's desire. Even what they're thinking of bring it to pass before they even ask. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the anointing flow like a rivers of water. Lord let your glory cover this place like the waters cover the sea. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, let them be anointed with the fire of God. Lord, take them to new levels and new heights. Things they never even ask for, Lord, just because they raised their hand tonight. Give them supernatural provision, Lord God, and breakthroughs and answers to prayer. Give them miracles and signs and wonders. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you believe, it, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Give God the highest praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice? who has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You have never asked God to be in your life. You are missing out on a lot. You are missing out on a lot. If you want Jesus Christ to come into your life tonight, I want you to make your way down to the altar. Come on down. We're all family here. We've all done it. Nobody's going to look down on you. Get down here and get your victory. Get down here and get your breakthrough. Get down here and get your answer. Come on. You ought to be running to Jesus, knowing what he can do. He's a good God. Come on. Who wants Jesus tonight? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All of you all are saved? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you want breakthrough prayer tonight, come on down. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
God bless you, baby. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, sweetie. Glory to God. Who wants to join our sister? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, all heaven is clapping for you. All heaven's rejoicing. Come on down in the name of Jesus Christ. God's got breakthrough for you. God's got victory for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you want tonight, God's got it. I want you to repeat after me and everybody repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my life tonight. Change me and make me who you want me to be. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I will love you. I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And anybody else that want to pray for any other reason, raise your hand. Now, Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, the God of breakthrough, Lord, give them victory tonight. Whatever they need, Lord, you know their heart's desire. In the name of Jesus Christ, the God of signs and wonders, make it happen tonight, Lord. Lord, within 24 hours, let them see the victory of the answer to their prayer. You're the God who always shows up. You're always on time. Father, you're never late. You're the God of the right now. So, Father, right now, Lord, do a miracle in every, each and every hand that's raised tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. And God, I give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. We have a response lounge right here. If you just accepted Jesus tonight, please go to the response lounge. Get a Bible. We're going to pray for you. Give you some resources. Your life is never going to be the same. Amen. Right to the response lounge. Right in this way. Right this way. Right this way. Go ahead, folks. Right this way. Praise the Lord. We won't be but a few minutes as I turn it back over to Pastor John. Bless the living God. It's been my pleasure and my honor to give you the word of God tonight. I pray you've been blessed. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.